instantaneous velocity is the slope of a curve at one specific point. So you have a curve and you pick a point, you want to find the slope of, of that curve at that one specific point. So let's say you are running uh, on, on, on a race, you're running toward the finish line. And then my question is, what is your instantaneous velocity or what is your velocity at the moment you cross the finish line right exact at that moment so if you take a picture at that moment based on the picture you are motionless you are not moving there is no way to tell what your velocity is based on that picture but think about this you don't need a lot of physics to understand instantaneous velocity so there is a moving object okay and then the position of this object can be described by a function again we have a moving object and then the position of this object at, at time t at any time can be described by a function so when time equals to such number you are able to tell what the position is of this moving object right and then if you graph this function i said that the position can be described by a function it doesn't have to be a linear function so you graph this function and then you see a curve just draw, draw a curve on your paper this curve represents the position of a moving object at time equal at time t all right and then i am asking you to find the slope of this curve at one specific point so that gives you the first difficulty the only thing you learn at this point is finding the slope of a straight line right straight line still remember that in your elementary algebra so for straight line you pick two points and then you do the rise over run which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 that gives you the slope of a straight line right i am talking about a curve so when you are talking about a curve then this rise over run is not going to work so how do you find the slope or i should say the instantaneous velocity well first of all you need to start with two points so whenever we do two points then we have to talk about average velocity which is what i already talked about in the previous video so for the first graph do you see that there is a curve so i have uh something looks like a parabola and then i have two points one at a and then one at b so we have a corresponding by value f of a and then another corresponding by value f of b and then i sketch a line so this is a straight line i am asking you to find the average velocity between this time interval t equals to a and t equals to b so the average velocity or the slope of this straight line not not a curve average velocity we are back to a straight line so average velocity between time a and time b what is your velocity for average velocity i am talking about a specific time window for instantaneous velocity i am talking about one point okay you can write this down average velocity we are talking about a time window time between a and b for instantaneous velocity i am talking about one specific point okay one window versus one point okay so average velocity is the slope of a straight line that is equals to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a or if you are uh, use what i are uh, the, uh, the letter I used in the previous video is s of b minus s of a, same thing, right? D depending what, what what you call the function, function s in terms uh, in terms of t or a function f in terms of x, whatever you like to call. So f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, this is the slope of a straight line, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is also known as rise over run. All right, so this is average velocity. Now, I have to use the idea of average velocity to get to instantaneous velocity. So in the next picture right over here, so this time I use the function st, so s, you can think about that as a position function, and then the t is the time t, and then uh, at, at a, I am looking for the slope of this curve at point a. Once again, I have a parabola, or you can say I have a curve. I am trying to find the slope of this curve, not a straight line, at t equals to a. How do I do that at one specific point? The y2 minus y1 is not going to work because that requires two points. So what if you only have one? So if you only have one, we have to do something else based on the average velocity, based on the concept. Now, what we are going to do first, we are going to add x steps forward. So we are going to create another point first. Okay, so from a, 
I am going to do, have an a plus h. So from a to a plus h, you have h step forward. So you add h steps forward. And then when t is equal to a plus h, there is a corresponding y value, right? So that is called s of a plus h. All right, so now we have two points. One at t equals to a, one at t equals to a plus h. Now, what we are trying to do next is, I am trying to find the average velocity okay, between this time interval from a to a plus h. And then I will set up a limit and then let h goes to zero. Okay, so let me just write, write, write this down. So how do you find the average vo velocity? So for average velocity, I will just follow the rise over run. So I will use uh, point 0.2 minus point 0.1. So I will use s of a plus h. This is y2 minus y1 and then divided by x2 minus x1. So a plus h min minus a. Okay, and then I'm going to set a limit. So I'm going to set a limit. So what, watch this. This is the key concept. So I'm going to do a limit as h approaches to zero and then s of a plus h minus s of a so the bottom when uh the bottom or actually you don't need to plug in h yet the bottom a plus h minus a that is just equals to h right so can you describe this uh math this limit or this action in words yes so what we are trying to do again key concept we are going to add h steps forward so add h steps write this down forward and then keyword strength the interval back to point eight the interval back to point a by doing this by letting h goes to zero so the strength means you are letting h goes to zero so that leads you to two keywords that is so important in differential calculus they are called the secant line and the tangent line so here is how the secant line and tangent line works so first of all secant what is secant secant means a cross cross crossing two intersections so you draw a straight line that crosses the graph or the curve two times so secant line means two exactly two intersection what about tangent line secant is crossing Tangent is touching. Okay, again, secant. Secant means crossing. You shoot a line cross the curve, and then tangent means touching. You are trying to sketch a straight line that touches the curve at one point. So here is how the secant line works. So I'm going to uh, draw a line like, like okay, secant line. So I, I, I draw a line like this. So this is secant line, right? Cross the curve twice. Okay, the line is over there. So how do you do the strength? How do you picture this? In your mind so I'm, I'm going to show you right now so what we are going to do next is I am going to draw a line I'm going to draw a point at point A and then I will draw a secant line so now do you see that this this, this line right right over here crosses the curve two times right so when you do the shrinking when x goes to zero watch when x goes to zero you are minimizing the distance between a and a plus x right like, like that so when x goes to zero you just, do you see that the second point is getting closer and closer to the first point and then eventually we will reach back to point A. So at the moment you get back to point A, you have a tangent line. So let me do this demonstration one more time. So I start with a secant line to intersection, right? And then when x goes to zero, watch, shrinking, 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 shrinking. The second point is going back to the first point, and then eventually we are back to the first point. So when you are back to the first point, the tangent, then you get a tangent line that touches the curve one time. So when you back to the first point, you get a tangent line that touches the curve one time. So the tangent line looks like this. Or I should use um, green, right? Okay, I, I would do this one more time for you because I want to m match the color. Okay, let me switch to green. So I'm going to draw a green dot. So this is point A, right? And then this is uh, A plus H. So what we are going to do first is we, we construct a secant line 
and then we do the shrinking so x goes to zero shrink 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 so back to point a so now you have a tangent line so a tangent line looks like this is a straight line that touches the curve one time so this you add h steps so you plus h steps and then you shrink it back okay so let me state this so we have a uh, instantaneous velocity so this you can say this is the instantaneous velocity so instantaneous velocity at t equals to a so that is the slope of the tangent line so the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the curve at a do you still remember that i said that since you have one point only the rise over run is not going to work but we started as two points so we use a and a plus h as two point and then we we use this formula to we do the rise over run right over there but i will just shrink the h goes to zero so as long as h goes to zero we back to one point so we we use the rise over run anyway but we use but we use that wisely and we let x goes to zero so even though we use two point but the result is still the slope of the curve at one point okay so we started at two we borrow the idea we started as a two as long as you shrink that to h the result is exactly at one point so how do you apply this so how do you apply this to a problem so before we jump into that problem so this is a straight line right so tangent line is a straight line so tangent line is a straight line uh the straight line so let's say straight line you have y equals to mx plus b and then b m is equals to the slope right and then b is the y intercept so whatever the slope is equals to that is the instantaneous velocity so this is the instantaneous velocity at that point okay so let's jump to a uh, problem so the problem i prepare for you is this so we have an object move a distance of s meters from its initial point so when t is equals to zero the object is at its initial point and then the entire uh, position function can be described by this s equals to 4t square i am going to use one function again I'm using one function to describe the distance or the distance or the position, whatever you like to call. When time is equals to zero, the, the object is at zero meter. When time is equals to one, you plug in one to the T, you get a four. When time is equals to two, you, you get to do the plug in, so on and so forth. My first question is, I want to find the average velocity between this interval between time one and time one plus h and then i gave you four h and then i'm going to use this four average velocity to estimate the instantaneous velocity all right so let's let, let's do it all right so when h is equals to one what, what what do you do when h is equals to one so h is equals to one we have one less than or equal to t and then one plus one right so one plus one and then you bring the one over here one plus one that is equals to two so the average velocity that is equals to time y2 minus y1 which is s of two minus s of one divided by two minus one right so two minus one when s is equals to two you plug in the two to the function four times two square minus uh four times one square divided by one so that is equals to 16 minus four divided by one that is equals to 12 meters per second okay so when h is equals to 0 0.1 we will have one less than or equal to t less than or equal to one plus 0.1 that is 1.1 right and then we have average velocity equals to s of 1.1 minus s of 1 divided by 1.1 minus 1 and then we have 4 times 1.1 square minus 4 times 1 square divided by 0 0.1 that gives me 8.4 meters per second 
meters per second. And then the next one is 0 0.01. So H equals to 0 0.01. Then we add that to, to the 1. 1 plus 0 0.01. So that is uh, 1.01. And then average velocity. That is S of 1.01 .01 minus S of 1 divided by 1.01 .01 minus 1. And then we plug in 4 times 1.01 .01 minus 4 times 1 square square divided by 0 .01 0.01. So this one gives me 8.04, 8.04 meters per second and then as you can see as x goes to zero do you see that all all these things right over here i started at one and then eventually i am making x so small that means i am making x goes to zero so what happened when x goes to zero and then the next one i believe is also the last one right so yep when x equals to 0 0.01 so when x equals to 0 0.001 we have 1 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1 plus that and then we plug in average velocity that is equals to s of 1.001 .001 minus s of 1 divided by 1.001 minus 1, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. That one, when you do the plug-in, you have a 0 0.008004 divided by 0 0.001. That equals to 8.004 meters per second. So this one, we have x equals to, this is x equals to 1 x equals to 0 0.1, x equals to 0 0.01, x equals to 0 0.001. So overall, I am shrinking x, right? So I am letting x goes to 0. I am letting x goes to 0. And then let's compare the result. When x is equals to 1, we have a 12. Make the x smaller, we have 8.4. Even smaller, 8.04. Even, even smaller, 8.004. So as x goes to 0, what, what does that mean? As x goes to 0, the average velocity approaches to 8 meters per second, right? So we just let x goes to 0. So this 8 meters per second is also, I'm going to change this to, to another color. So this 8 meters per second is also the instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous. At time equals to what? At time equals to 1. Why time equals to 1? Because we have 1 plus a little bit. So that means you are taking one is right here. So you are taking a point that is a little bit forward and then you find the average velocity between these two points. Since these two points are so close, the average velocity is just the instantaneous velocity. So you have a point right here and then you take a point that is a little bit, just a one tiny little bit to the right of that point and you are finding the average velocity between these two points such that the average it's just this point. So let's say you are taking a one, right? You add a you add another value that is so close to it. So one point zero 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 a bunch of zero one, and then you divide this by two. Do we agree that the average is just one, right? So you have a you have two two value. They are so close, so so close. You add them, you divide it by two. So that is just the the one. Or if you have used another value like 5, 5.00 bunch of 0, 1, you add them, these two values are so close, you add them and then divide it by 2, you will just get a 5, right? So that's the idea in this problem. I am going to take a point that is so close and then do all the math to see what happened when I shrink the x to 0, okay? So I'm going to do one more thing and then I will just, and, and then I will end this video now. In this problem, we have this as the position function, right? S equals to 4t squared. So S equals to 4t squared. Let me just do, do this in, in another color. So my next question is, 
s equals to 4 t square. This is a position function. And then what I did when t is equals to 1, I found the average, I found the instantaneous velocity, right? So this is the instantaneous velocity, the 8 meters per second is the instantaneous velocity when time is equals to 1. What I am trying to do next, which is extremely important in differential calculus, is how do you find one function? Okay, one function. Not doing all, all, all the math like this. I'm trying to find one function that describes the instantaneous velocity at any time. So that is called the algebraic method. So what we are trying to do next is we are trying to do the, we are trying to do the rise over one for the entire piece. I will just jump right into the limit. So we have limit. I'm going to shrink the x goes to zero. And then I will do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I will just do a four. And then instead of having a one plus x, I will just do t plus x any time. So this t will any time plus x just in, in general minus four t squared divided by so that will be uh, a plus h minus a right so I this one I will be just using t plus okay this will be h I'm going to make a sign note so this is like uh, this is like a plus h minus a and then this one will be uh, will be a s of a plus h minus s of a Okay, I'm trying to generalize everything. And then you are going to expand the entire numerator because you need an x to get rid of the x in the denominator. So that is a 4 t squared plus uh, 2 th and then plus x squared minus 4 t squared and then divided by x. And then you have a 4 t squared plus 2 th plus x squared minus 4 t squared. And then you can get rid of this, right? 4t squared and minus 4t squared got cancelled. And then you have an x. And then you will factor out that x. So we have 2t plus 1x. And then divided by x. And this x got cancelled as well. So once t goes to... Not t. Once x goes to 0. So once x goes to 0, we have 2t plus 0. That is equals to 2t. So this is an instantaneous... velocity at time t wait hold on oh, come on why do i make this mistake four times two eight you already found it i trust you eight <laughs> So this is one function that describes, this is one function, s equals to a t, is one function that describes the velocity at any time. So when t is equals to 1, s is equals to a times 1. When t is equals to 2, s is equals to a times 2. When t is equals to 5, s is equals to a times 5. That gives you the instantaneous velocity at any time. So if you do the limits like this, then you do not have to do a bunch of work for every single time value, for every single time. So when t is equal to 1, you did a bunch of work, right? So if you get the function first, all you have to do is plug in. All right, so that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoy it and hope that it's helpful to you. I will see you all in the next one. Signing out. Oh, don't forget, if you like it, give me a like. All right, see you there.